sport incentivization, let's say. So once per week, the people from the town can go to the park and practice for free. So it's a very interesting opportunity for all of us. And this among other things, but the very interesting thing we did this year was working with kids in a primary school. And this is mainly what I will try to share with you today. This the experience we did and the results we had. And most importantly, I'd like to share something very interesting that happened because I had this idea to start uh, teaching kids long time ago when I started a couple of years after I started learning Qigong for myself because I noticed it was really good and if we start practicing from younger uh, ages then more effectively it comes deeper into our frame of reference. But it wasn't until I met uh, Rocio Canales here in this uh, Chi Channel meetings that she put consciously the information. She she explained how she was working in Mexico with the, in a primary school and after the meeting or actually when she was organizing the Chi field she said and I hope somebody will pick up this idea and continue doing this work. So she constantly put this information and since then it, it was very present in my mind. So when I had the chance to talk with these friends, Andras and Anya, I told them, hey, we should propose to, to the schools in Namjali if we can do this. And they took it also upon themselves and they did it. They proposed to in a meeting with the a, with a school. And now I will tell you more about it. So first, let's organize the chief field and hopefully, you know, some of you who are present here today or some of your students, maybe if you, if you have students or some of the people who will join us uh, later on, will also pick up this information and we continue working with kids. So let's organize the chief field. Sit in a comfortable position. Straighten your back. You can place your feet evenly grounded on the floor. Relax the sole of your feet. Feel all the surface of the feet in contact with the ground. Also the toes. Then focusing the ankles. Relax, conscious. From inside out. Relax the knees, hips, lumbar, vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, cervical vertebrae, tucking the chin gently, straightening the back of your head, connect. Tongue. Connect the head to the sky. Your arms naturally relax, your arms hollow, your hands resting on your thighs, your fingers also relax. And then start becoming aware of your senses. Become aware of your vision, of your hearing, your smelling, testing, and touching. So you bring consciousness into your natural activities of your senses, which allows you to go deeper into a conscious state. Observe where this consciousness comes from. Deep from within the center of your mind, the center of your E and E. Consciously send the intention from E and E to relax, to 
whole body. Relax, forehead, space inside, head and eyes. Inside nose, inside mouth. Every part of the body becoming open and relaxed. The chi flowing freely and abundantly through the neck, shoulders, the space inside the chest, the heart. Lungs, all the abdomen, all the inner organs. Space inside, arms, legs, everything inside the body becomes relaxed, open, spacious. Clear and relaxed. Then our UNT can expand even further to the space around our body. The front, the left, the back, the right. Under the ground and above. Head, connecting ourselves with our chief field, with the field in our house, in our neighborhood, with the nature, with all the friends, with all the participants of the channel. All our teachers, and with Dr. Pang, and with all the Jinang Chikung teachers, so we share good information, and good practices. It makes us grow as a community. In for a moment into the immense, vast human chi. And from that state, observe again into our bodies, from the skin coming inwardly to all the pores, to all the muscles. All the blood vessels, to all the meridian channels, to all the tendons and bones, deep in to the core, in harmony, health. all the good information you wish for yourself and for your loved ones. Voilà. Slowly, very gently, all Right, you can keep the state. You can slowly move your body.
some of our friends are very relaxed in a very good state of chicken already. That's very good. Okay. So I will start by telling you how we came into contact, uh, short introduction to how we came into contact with this school first. In this town, Domjale, where where we did it every I don't know every half a year, I think they do it twice a year. They invite all the um, groups, uh, all the societies in, around them to, for example, martial arts or the firemen, the volunteers, different uh, societies, they can go to one school, present their activities for the kids. So we were teaching already Chineng Chikung and they before accepted to show our activities. And we had uh, I think it was six or seven classes in the during the day, around half an hour to forty five minutes class with each group in the school. From first grade to I think sixth or sixth grade, I think. Ranging age from eight to twelve or thirteen years old. And it was really interesting because different ages has of the school came in during one of these classes. I was guiding the lift chi up or chi down method, the short version, not the whole method, but just lifting chi and pulling chi into their bodies. I, I saw with the side of my eyes, with the peripheral vision, I saw the director coming into the, the class and she was like in the door, like she opened the door and she was like this for five minutes, you know. She was standing and looking at the kids because she couldn't believe it. When the class was finished, she came back and she told us, she was still surprised and she told us, I've never seen the, in, she's already for, I think, she's about to retire, this director, so she's, her whole life, she's been working in the school. She said that in her whole career, she never saw the kids so uh, relaxed and, and focused doing something. So, and also quiet, you know, the whole class was quiet, uh, practice. Uh, so she was very surprised and she asked us if we could do this regularly already. So we, we were also very uh, happy and surprised with her proposal, but we, we didn't, we said, we can try, but we didn't know how. So after talking a few times, she actually came up with the idea of doing a research that for allowing, uh, how to say, to introduce a new subject into their school uh, schedule year, there, there had to be like a, it had to be framed like a research. So we said, actually, that's a very good idea. and. As as Jinang Chikung practitioners, we should uh, strive to bring as much a scientific approach to our practice. So we said, actually, to do a research would be perfect for us also. Then I started to research by myself. There were already done certain uh, similar things in, in the field. And there was one study done by Gerd Brolin, it's uh, her name. Later on, I can share it also here. I can put it in the chat right now. Brolin, what is it? Um, it's a person from, I think it's Germany or Holland. She did already uh, research with Chinen Chikung applied to primary school. It's a really amazing research. She did very uh, thoroughly and very uh, very detailed, we can say. 
Our approach this year was to do a pilot study. And I will tell you also more if you, if you engage in this adventure of doing uh, research with kids and chikung, it's uh, good to be very prepared and to, for yourself to do research first on how to do a research or to work with a team that knows how to do a research. We had no experience doing this. So we, we ran into many uh, obstacles and we learned our way through. Uh, but this this woman Gert Brolin she did it already from scratch she did a perfect perfect work. Um, so then after some some months of preparation then we we had a meeting with the school director and she told us that we could start I think it was in February with the teachers of the school with a group of teachers. And then in March, we could start with the kids of the school. So we had twice per week, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays with teachers of the school and Tuesdays and Thursdays with kids. And with kids, we were going to work with two specific um, groups of the school that she chose. It was second grade and fifth grade. And this, interestingly, I erased it from my inform from my UNT, from my mind, from my frame of reference, as immediately as she told it, because uh, I didn't want to be influenced by this information, but she said that she gave she chose these groups because they were the most conflicted of the school. So the kids with more problems, let's say. And for me to, to <laughs> knowing already that how information acts, I immediately Hun Yaling Tong and thought the kids are kids, they are normal and they can do perfect. But later on when we were using the we used a um, tool for uh, addressing changes before and after. This is how we did the study. We didn't have a pilot study, a pilot uh, not a pilot, a comparison group, you know, uh, when you have you work with one group and you do the study in one group and you do the study with another group that has no intervention, like a control group. We didn't have a control group. And hopefully with the results we did of this pilot study, we can apply it to do a whole year project like this in a school and have a control group, control group and bigger, uh, bigger trial. Um, but when, well, as we started, we used the SDQ. It's a questionnaire. Uh, very interestingly, I'm also writing down here strength and difficulties questionnaire. Um, the SDQ is a very interesting uh, tool for measure or for addressing um, how to say emotional and behavioral um, capabilities and difficulties in the kids. It ranges, I think, from seven years to 17. And the interesting thing is it can be filled by kids themselves, but also by parents and teachers. And it's very, very popular among psychologists in used in large scale. So it has a lot of um, information behind already. It's, it has, you can do, for example, statistically comparison of uh, national already in most countries. It's translated to many languages. It's free to use and it's also not necessarily uh, you don't need to be a psychologist to use. You can uh, use it, for example, like we did uh, with the teachers, with the parents, and with the kids. And it's very straightforward. It's very easy to, to use as a tool. So when we started, we we gave the kids this questionnaire. We had first a meeting with the parents in the school, uh, and we presented ourselves, the group, uh, Anya and Rash and me, we showed the parents Lachi, uh, how, how to do Lachi. And for the parents, you know, to be informed and try by themselves what we were proposing for their kids. 
and it was very good because most of the parents agreed with uh, with the idea of doing a research they signed me in a paper and everything only a couple of parents they were uh, not uh, not in favor of it because mainly because of uh, their religious beliefs so we had a few letters going back and forward with these parents explaining that some forms of qigong are based um, on religious beliefs taoism nowadays became a religion although in the beginning it wasn't it was mainly a philosophy but that our system jineng qigong has no connotation of religious beliefs it's meant for everybody to be practiced it's open system so we had a lot of explanation with the parents about this and eventually um, the director was very is a very smart woman and she she said instead of putting it into the schedule of the school we can have it as um, optional practice before the the beginning of the school hours so one hour before the beginning of school the kids could come to the school and practice qigong the the ones who agreed they brought their kids the ones the parents who didn't agree they just one hour late and we did like this and it worked very good so everybody was uh, satisfied with the solution and also the teachers uh, with the teachers in the beginning we had a very high concurrence like 90 percent of the teachers were coming and slowly slowly it was decaying and in the end it was only few of them uh, still coming um, but those who were coming, they they saw by themselves also the results of their how they improved themselves, and also they I I was very keen to to see if they could use the idea of organizing a chief field while they're there for their classes, like not only for their own benefit but also in their classes, and some of them uh, said that they were doing. So this is also something that hopefully it's not only during the period of research that it works, but that it will continue to work on the school because the teachers took it upon themselves. Um, yeah. So then we did, I will tell you now a little bit about the methods we use in the research. Um, the most basic thing we did is organizing the chief field. With the kids of second grade, you know, they are really young. So for them, we we framed it in a way of uh, singing a song. I'm not sure if you are familiar as with the Hunyuan Chi uh, song, Hunyuan Chi, yeah. Uh, Hunyuan Chi, Amaho. <laughs> Good. Then with our friend Anya, she, my friend Anya is in not next. Monday, but the next one, she's going to teach us how to write Hunyuan Lintong or Lintian Li or some of the, the information from Jinning. But she's a sinologist, so I asked her to translate the song into Slovenian. How, like, not literally, because it would be very hard to, to match the, the melody, but to translate the information. So we came with a song that roughly says, uh, Love is everywhere, Yamaho, hey, um, we are full of good things and good information, Yamaho, hey. So we did a song for them, actually, and we did like a choreography. So they they were doing already a form, a, a, a new form of Qigong <laughs> with the information of Chineng, uh, like organization of the Qigong. With the fifth grade instead, we were doing uh, the adversity organizing the chip field. and it's also interesting when if we have time i will show you the results of the research that the with the fifth grade of course it's easier for them to to keep concentration they have already a little bit more of uh, self-control so they can endure more with the concentration and we were also trying some of methods that Teacher Lington True, the from last week, he was teaching here. 
uh, he we we signed in for a webinar about how to teach Juneng Qigong to kids and how to develop paranormal abilities. So we were using some of these games and methods with cards and, and this to for them to read from UNT. And very surprisingly, after I don't know four or five sessions, the kids were already very good at this. With eyes closed, they could feel the space around their head. You know, with eyes closed, one hand coming from any direction, they had to feel it and catch it, catch the hand. Yeah, and they were really good at this. When they became really good, then we started with a card. You know, like doing like this with a paper. Uh, like with eyes closed, feeling where direction was the paper coming with a piece of card, and they they when they were good at this, that they could catch it uh, at once. Then to read the color of the card, we were using this uh, poker card, so they are either red or black. So there they had 50 50 percent of chance. Let's say if you if you think like this, but some of them already could see number also. So there the, how to say, the, the, the chance reduces dramatically because there are like 11, I think, 11 numbers. So it's really, really specific that they could see number and color. And it was really interestingly in one class that two kids could do this. It, it was very high. Uh, percentage if you think in a class of around 20 something two kids it's really high percentage that they could see with the unt so we were using su chang fa method with the fifth grade also we practice lift chia put chi down a couple of times uh, the entire sequence sometimes we were dividing uh, only the opening or opening and closing or section one section two or section three we were practicing also animals qigong i don't know if you heard of wu chin shi another technique of or another system of uh, qigong very old and traditional that you imitate uh, movements of animals and it was interesting for them because uh, we could relate it to to Kung Fu Panda movie. So this is also interesting because normally if you try to start teaching Qigong for kids, they are like, nah, this is for, for older people. We, we don't like this. But if you tell, okay, have you seen Kung Fu Panda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is how you practice Kung Fu, you know, how you practice, how you improve yourself, how you train your, your senses, how you train your body, your mind. Then they very fast, they, they enter this game. So we started, sometimes with the Qigong of animals, and then we started to relate it to the five organs. For example, the tiger related to the liver, the strength, you know, the power, the um, kacha, the snake related to the, uh, to the kidneys, or like this, like different animals for different organs. And then we started to talk about the organs and the emotions. The motions and UNT like this, so connecting the information of Qigong. And we sometimes we practice also uh, La Chi, but more as a additional uh, method. You know, we were using it, for example, before awakening uh, our consciousness, we were doing like La Chi for a little bit, then lifting Chi up and sending Chi from top of head then from yin tang, then around the head, so we awaken our sensitivity in our, in our field. Uh, sometimes we use the this mudra, uh, do you know already? This practice, like circling the Kunyan Chi energy from the sky into the head, then from the head out, yin tang. Yes? Okay, some some of you I, I think they know. Um, so different techniques that are interesting for allowing you know the mind to focus inside, have to start observing the inside of 
of your mind. So already, if you can guide a group of kids just to come to that state, already, you know, the, have the results of this study been published? No, not yet. Actually, we have them and we are going to present them. In a, we've been invited to a mindfulness conference that is going to happen here in Slovenia in a few months. And we are going to publish it there. We are going to share it publicly there for the first time. And for now, I just shared it in, in the WhatsApp group of uh, Chiku. And with group of friends also that are particularly interested in, in teaching kids. So later on, if I give you, if I can give you by mail or by or by Facebook this, uh, please still do not share it publicly, only for you to, to read it and, and see the, the results. Um, yeah, like this. Then from the methods we were also using sport incentivization, let's say. So once per week, the people from the town can go to the park and practice for free. So it's a very interesting opportunity for all of us. And this among other things, but the very interesting thing we did this year was working with kids in a primary school. And this is mainly what I will try to share with you today, is the experience we did and the results we had. And most importantly, I'd like to share something very interesting that happened because I had this idea to start uh, teaching kids long time ago when I started, a couple of years after I started learning Qigong for myself, because I noticed it was really good. And if we start practicing from younger uh, ages, then the more effectively it comes deeper into our frame of reference but it wasn't until i met uh, rocio canales here in this uh, chi channel meetings that she put consciously the information she she explained how she was working in mexico with the in a primary school and after the meeting or actually when she was organizing the chi field she said and i hope somebody will pick up this idea and continue doing this work so she constantly put this information and since then it, it was very present in my mind. So when I had the chance to talk with these friends, Andras and Anya, I told them, hey, we should propose to, to the schools in Namshali if we can do this. And they took it also upon themselves and they did it. They proposed to in a meeting with a with the school. And now I will tell you more about it. So first let's organize the chief field and hopefully you know, some of you who are present here today, or some of your students, maybe if you, if you have students or some of the people who will join us uh, later on, will also pick up this information and we continue working with kids. So let's organize the chief. Sit in a comfortable position, straighten your back. Can place your feet evenly grounded on the floor. Relax the sole of your feet, feel all the surface of the feet in contact with the ground, also the toes. Then focusing the ankles, relax consciously from inside out. Relax the knees. Hips, lumbar, vertebra, thoracic vertebra, cervical vertebra, tucking the chin gently, straightening the back of your head, connect the tip of tongue. Connect the head to the sky. Your arms naturally relax, the armpits hollow. Your hands resting on your thighs, your fingers also relax. 
then start becoming aware of your senses. Become aware of your vision, of your hearing, your smelling, testing, and touching. So you bring consciousness into your natural activities of your senses, which allows you to go deeper into a conscious state. Observe where this consciousness comes from. Be from within the center of your mind, the center of your E and B. Consciously send the intention from E and B to relax the whole body. Relax, forehead, space inside, head and eyes, inside nose, inside mouth, every part of the body becoming open and relaxed. Chi flowing freely and abundantly through the neck, shoulders, the space inside the chest, the heart, the lungs, all the abdomen. All the inner organs. Space inside arms, legs. Everything inside body becomes relaxed, open, spacious, clear and relaxed. Then our E and T can expand even further to the space around our body. The front, the left, the back, the right. Under the ground and above the head. Connecting ourselves our chief field, the field in our house, in our neighborhood, with the nature, with all the friends, with all the participants of the channel, with all our teachers. Dr. Pang and with all the Chinang Chikung teachers. So we share good information, good practices. This makes us grow as a community. for a moment into the immense vast human chi and from that state observe again into our bodies from the skin coming inwardly to all the pores to all the muscles all the blood vessels, to all the meridian channels, to all the tendons and bones, 
it in the core. Arm, head, all the good information you wish for yourself, for your loved ones. Slowly, very gently, open your eyes. You can keep safe. You can slowly move your body. Our friends are very relaxed in a very good state of sitting already. That's very good. Okay. So I will start by telling you how we came into contact, a short introduction to how we came into contact with this school first. And this town, Dom Jale, where where we did it every, I don't know, every half a year, I think they do it twice a year. They invite all the um, groups, uh, all the societies in, around them to, for example, uh, martial arts or the um, firemen, the volunteers. Different uh, societies, they can go to one school, present their activities for the kids. So we were teaching already Chinang Chikung, and they were accepted to show our activities. And we had, uh, I think was six or seven classes in the during the day around half an hour to 45 minutes class with each group in the school from first grade to I think six or sixth grade I think ranging age from eight to twelve or thirteen years old and it was really interesting because different ages has of the school came in during one of these classes. I was guiding the lift chi up or chi down method, the short version, not the whole method, but just lifting chi and pouring chi into their bodies. I, I saw with the side of my eyes, with the peripheral vision, I saw the director coming into the, the class and she was like in the door, like she opened the door and she was like this for five minutes. You know, She was standing and looking at the kids because she couldn't believe it. When the class was finished, she came back and she told us, she was still surprised and she told us, I've never seen the, and she's already for, I think, she's about to retire, this director. So she's, her whole life, she's been working in the school. She said that in her whole career, she never saw the kids so uh, relaxed and, and focused doing something. So, and also quiet, you know, the whole class was quiet uh, practice. Uh, so she was very surprised and she asked us if we could do this regularly already. So we, we were also very uh, happy and surprised with her proposal, but we, we didn't, we said we can try, but we didn't know how. So after talking a few times, she actually came up with the idea of doing a research that for allowing, uh, how to say, 
to introduce a new subject into their school uh, schedule year, there there had to be like a it had to be framed like a research. So we said actually that's a, a very good idea, and us as Jinan Chikung practitioners, we should uh, strive to bring as much a scientific approach to our practice. So we said actually to do a research would be perfect for us also. Then I started to research by myself. There were already done certain uh, similar things in, in the field. And there was one study done by Gerd Brolin. It's uh, her name. Later on, I can share it also here. I can put it in the chat right now. Brolin. Um, it's a person from, I think it's Germany or Holland. She did already uh, research with Jinan Chikung applied to primary school. It's a really amazing research. She did very uh, thoroughly and very, uh, very detailed, we can say. Our approach this year was to do a pilot study. And I will tell you also more if you you engage in this adventure of doing uh, research with kids and Qigong, it's uh, good to be very prepared and to, for yourself to do research first on how to do a research or to work with a team that knows how to do a research. We had no experience doing this, so we, we ran into many uh, obstacles and we learned our way through. Uh, but this this woman, Gerd Brolin, she did already from scratch. She did a perfect, perfect work. Um, so then, after some some months of preparation, then we we had a meeting with the school director, and she told us that we could start. I think it was in February with the teachers of the school, with a group of teachers, and then in March we could start with the kids. Of the school, so we had twice per week, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays with teachers of the school, and Tuesdays and Thursdays with kids. And with kids, we were going to work with two specific um, groups of the school that she chose. It was second grade and fifth grade, and this interestingly, I erased it from my inform from my. Even from my mind, from my frame of reference, as immediately as she told it, because uh, I didn't want to be influenced by this information. But she said that she gave, she chose these groups because they were the most conflicted of the school, so the kids with more problems, let's say. And for me to, to <laughs> knowing already that how information acts, I immediately Hun Yoling Tong and thought the kids are kids, they are normal and they can do perfect. But later on when we were using the, we used a um, tool for uh, addressing changes before and after. This is how we did the study. We didn't have a pilot study, a pilot, uh, not a pilot, a comparison group, you know, uh, when you have you work with one group and you do the study in one group and you do the study with another group that has no intervention, like a control group. We didn't have a control group. And hopefully with the results we did of this pilot study, we can apply it to do a whole year project like this in a school and have a control group, a control group and bigger, uh, bigger trial. Um, but when well, as we started, we used the SDQ. It's a questionnaire. Uh, very interestingly, I'm also writing down here strength and difficulties questionnaire. Um, the SDQ is a very interesting uh, tool for measure or for addressing um, how to say emotional and behavioral um, capabilities and difficulties in the kids. 
it ranges, I think, from seven years to 17. And the interesting thing is it can be filled by kids themselves, but also by parents and teachers. And it's very, very popular among psychologists in used in large scale. So it has a lot of um, information behind already. It's, it has, you can do, for example, statistically comparison of uh, national already in most countries. It's translated to many languages. It's free to use and it's also not necessarily uh, you don't need to be a psychologist to use. You can uh, use it, for example, like we did uh, with the teachers, with the parents, and with the kids. And it's very straightforward. It's very easy to, to use as a tool. So when we started, we we gave the kids this questionnaire. We had first a meeting with the parents in the school, uh, and we presented ourselves, the group, uh, Anya and Rash and me, we showed the parents Lachi, uh, how, how to do Lachi. And for the parents, you know, to be informed and try by themselves what we were proposing for their kids. And it was very good because most of the parents agreed with, uh, with the idea of doing a research. They signed in a paper and everything. Only a couple of parents, they were uh, not uh, not in favor of it because mainly because of uh, their religious beliefs. So we had a few letters going back and forward with these parents explaining that some forms of Qigong are based um, on religious beliefs. Taoism nowadays became a religion, although in the beginning it wasn't. It was mainly a philosophy. but our system, Jineng Qigong, has no connotation of religious beliefs. It's meant for everybody to be practiced. It's an open system. So we had a lot of explanation with the parents about this. And eventually, um, the director was very, is a very smart woman. And she, she said, instead of putting it into the schedule of the school, we can have it as um, optional practice before the, the beginning of the school hours. So one hour before the beginning of school, the kids could come to the school and practice Qigong. The, the ones who agreed, they brought their kids. The ones, the parents who didn't agree, they just one hour late come to the school. And we did like this and it worked very good. So everybody was uh, satisfied with the solution. And also the teachers. Uh, with the teachers, in the beginning, we had a very high concurrence, like 90% of the teachers were coming. And slowly, slowly, it was decaying. And in the end, it was only a few of them uh, still coming. Um, but those who were coming, they, they saw by themselves also the results of their, how they improved themselves. And also, they, I, I was, very keen to to see if they could use the idea of organizing a chief field while they're there for their classes like not only for their own benefit but also in their classes and some of them uh, said that they were doing it. so this is also something that hopefully it's not only during the period of research that it works but that it will continue to work on the school uh, because the teachers took it upon themselves um yeah so then we did i will tell you now a little bit about the methods we use in the research and um, the most basic thing we did is organizing the chi field with the kids of second grade you know they are really young so for them we we framed it in a way of uh, singing a song i'm not sure if you are familiarized with the hunyuan chi uh, song, Hunyuan Chi, yeah. Hunyuan uh, Chi, Amaho, good. Then with our friend Anya, she, my friend Anya is in, not next Monday, but the next one, she's going to teach us how to write Hunyuan Tong or Ling Tian Li or some of the, the information 
from Jinning. But she's a sinologist, so I asked her to translate the song into Slovenian. How, like, not literally, because it would be very hard to match the, the melody, but to translate the information. So we came with a song that roughly says, uh, love is everywhere, yamaho, hey, um, we are full of good things and good information, yamaho, hey. So we did a song for them, actually. And we did like a choreography. So they they were doing already a form, a, a, a new form of Qigong <laughs> with the information of Qigong, uh, like organization of the Qigong. With the fifth grade instead, we were doing uh, the eighth verse for organizing the chicken. And it's also interesting when, if we have time, I will show you the results of the research that the, with the fifth grade, of course, it's easier for them to, to keep concentration. They have already a little bit more of uh, self-control, so they can endure more with the concentration. And we were also trying some of methods that teacher Lincoln Chu, the, from last week, he was teaching here. Uh, he, we, we signed in for a webinar about how to teach Juneng Qigong to kids and how to develop paranormal abilities in kids. So we were using some of these games and methods with cards and, and this to, for them to read from UNT. And very surprisingly, after, I don't know, four or five sessions, the kids were already very good at this. With eyes closed, they could feel the space around their head. You know, with eyes closed, one hand coming from any direction, they had to feel it and catch it, catch the hand, yeah. And they were really good at this. When they became really good, then we started with a card, you know, like doing like this with a paper, uh, like, with eyes closed, feeling where direction was the paper coming with a piece of card. And they, they, when they were good at this, that they could catch it uh, at once, then to read the color of the card. We were using this uh, poker card, so they are either red or black. So there they had 50-50% of chance, let's say, if you, if you think like this. But some of them already could see number also. So there, the how to say the 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 chance reduces dramatically because there are like eleven, I think, eleven numbers. So it's really, really specific that they could see number and color. And it was really interestingly in one class that two kids could do this. It, it was very high uh, percentage. If you think. In a class of around 20 something, two kids, it's really high percentage that they could see with the UNT. So we were using Su Chang Fa method. With the fifth grade, also we practiced Lift Chia Put Chi Down a couple of times, uh, the entire sequence. Sometimes we were dividing uh, only the opening or opening and closing, or section one, section two, or section three. We were practicing also animals, Qigong. I don't know if you heard of Wu, Wu Qin Shi, another technique of, or another system of uh, Qigong, very old and traditional, that you imitate uh, movements of animals. And it was interesting for them because uh, we could relate it to, to Kung Fu Panda movie. So this is also interesting because Normally, if you try to start teaching Qigong for kids, they are like, nah, this is for, for older people. We, we don't like this. But if you tell, okay, have you seen Kung Fu Panda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is how you practice Kung Fu, you know, how you practice, how you improve yourself, how you train your, your senses, how you train your body, your mind. Then they very fast, they, they enter this game. So we started sometimes with the Qigong of animals, and then we started to relate it to the five organs, for example, the tiger related to the liver, the strength, you know, the power, the um, kacha, the snake related to the, uh, the kidneys, or like this, like 
different animals for different organs. And then we started to talk about the organs and the emotions, the emotions and EMT, like this, so connecting the information of Qigong. And we sometimes we practice also uh, La Qi, but more as a additional uh, method. You know, we were using it, for example, before awakening uh, our consciousness, we were doing like La Qi for a little bit, then lifting Qi up and sending Qi from top of head, then from Yin Tang, then around the head. So we awaken our sensitivity. Are in our field. Uh, sometimes we use the this mudra. Uh, do you know already? This practice, like circling the Kundalini chi energy from the sky into the head, then from the head out. In. Yes. Okay. Some of, some of you, I, I think they know. Um, so different techniques that are interesting for allowing you know the mind to focus inside have to start observing the inside of, of your mind. So already if you can guide a group of kids just to come to that state, already you know the have the results of this study been published? No, not yet. Actually, we have them and we are going to present them. Uh, we've been invited to a mindfulness conference that is going to happen here in Slovenia in a few months, and we are going to publish it there. We are going to share it publicly there for the first time. And for now, I just shared it in, in the WhatsApp group of uh, Chiku and with a group of friends also that are particularly interested in in teaching kids. So. Later on, if I give you, if I can give you by mail or by or by Facebook, this uh, please still do not share it publicly. Only for you to to read it and, and see the the results. Um, yeah, like this. Then, from the methods we were also using uh, the squats, which on the last classes we were asking the kids, okay, what do you like the best? From all the techniques we practice, what's what was your favorite? Most of them said that the cards game to to read cards with their with their UNT. But interestingly, I didn't expect this, but many of the kids like the squats so much. The and then they, we were asking, okay, the one you like the most, then you practice it. You know, like at at your home you did and Two or three girls, you know, they could do not only the normal wall squat, you know, facing the wall, but the harder progressions, you know, the harder versions with the, you know, with the hands like this, squatting down like this, then squatting down with the hands up, and then squatting down with the hands in between. I don't know if you have ever tried this, but the squats with the hands in Neiman, it's really challenging. And one of the girls was doing this perfect. So I was very, very happy with it, with the results. Um, what else? Then we were also sometimes in the group of second grade, we were doing um, Pachi to each other, sending Chi to each other, like treatment for each other. And this was very important because in this particular group, we had some. We perceived that the kids weren't. Um, sometimes they they were nice as a group. You know, they were behaving more like individuals, which is normal. But still, you know, we wanted them to start uh, thinking as a group. You know, taking care of each other and take, taking care of uh, that your friends were also happy and and content in the school. So we wanted to to enhance that uh, that information of uh, merging and working as a whole. And with Fachi, it, I think there were also some progress. We also used different games with them. We had to present all the teachings in form of games with the younger kids. And for example, we used uh, 
Uh, it's a very uh, known game, I think, uh, to lift. You know, you put all the kids in, in, in line in front of each other, and just with the thumbs, they have to pull down. You put a stick, a bamboo stick, on their finger. They have to hold it like this. And naturally, the, our tendency is to raise our hands up. So everybody pulling up, pulling up, but they have to push it down. They have to bring it down to the, to the ground. So they have to work cooperatively and be relaxed and be aware of their movement, be, be aware that they are not pushing up, but going down. So this game we use, we use um, many, many games that are meant to, how to say, to awaken the cooperativity spirit. For example, uh, with something like this, you know, like a carpet, we put one in the ground and we make it smaller so everybody could, uh, could stand in the carpet, the whole group, like 20 kids standing in one carpet. And then next to it, one smaller one, like folded to the Hulk. So they had to pass everybody, the 20 kids, to the second carpet and they have to help each other. So they have to start holding each other and then to even a smaller one. So they could, they have to solve by themselves the problem. And they have, I don't know, like 10 minutes. We give them 10 minutes so they, they think how to do it. And they go from the bigger to the medium to the smaller and they have to cooperate to, to do it. The other interesting game with carpet was also to turn it over. You know, they are like carpet like this and all the kids standing up and they have to flip it, but without going down from the carpet. So they have to help each other to and figure out how to do. And normally there, normally there comes one that is like leader and says like, I know how to do, we start like this. So they have to very naturally uh, organize each other. Uh, and like this, which now I'm trying to remember which other games we did. From Lingdong's uh, teaching, we we were practicing practicing also uh, these for concentration, you know, and fine motoric skills. The game for memory. Do you know this? 